Shilpi Jain was involved was involved in the Teach India project as a freelance consultant with the British Council, providing services to NGOs, schools, and institutions pan India. She has worked on a range of teacher development projects. She co-moderated an online course for teachers on electronic village online, that is EVO 23. Being a lifelong learner, she has completed several certificate courses, including one from Nile UK as part of her own professional development. She has completed the module of the Cambridge Delta. So over to you, Shilpi. Thank you, Suman, for that introduction and a very warm welcome to all our participants here. Um, let me just share my screen and then we'll start. Are you able to see the screen? Yeah, just uh, put it in the yeah slideshow. Yeah, doing that again. Yes, Shilpi, it's visible. Good to go. Thank you, Suman, for that introduction and a very warm welcome to all our participants here. Wishing you a wonderful, happy new learning experiences um, again. So let's uh, start this workshop on three factors to consider while integrating technology in your language lessons. Our way traditional barriers open up limitless possibilities to the digital era. We'll explore the future of education and empower our students and ourselves for this digital era. So um, we'll find some practical ways to integrate technology and make every language class an immersive experience for our students. This is going to be a hands-on session. So be ready with your mobiles, laptops, or whatever device you're on for a lot of interaction in the chat box, mainly for the uh, time constraints that we have. So uh, in no way are all the activities being um, suggested or conducted today are uh, uh, supposed to be incorporated in one lesson. The intention is just to showcase what all possibilities uh, are there. Um, and teachers are free to pick and choose what suits their context. It's also to remove some mental blocks or fear for technology that we seem to have whenever we step out of our comfort zones. And we'll encounter tech issues just like you just saw. And that's always a learning curve that we have to overcome. And uh, for example, I was not able to enable sound in uh, embedded in the PPT. And I found three different ways of uh, enabling it because I faced that challenge. So challenges are a way to step forward on our learning curve. And without further ado, let's start. Today's learning outcomes would be you would be better able to identify the key factors for integrating technology in language classrooms. Describe aspects you need to consider about each of the three factors. And evaluate the effectiveness of using some technology resources in a practical lesson. So without uh, uh, wasting too much time, let's begin our journey with a Tech Perspectives quick poll. Uh, there are two questions um, that you can see on the screen, but I highly encourage you to um, answer them on uh, using the QR code with your phone camera. You can scan it, or there'll be a link in the chat box uh, that you can click and join. Preferably, I would uh, encourage you to use that so that we can have a visual representation of our um, uh, answers. Uh, else you're free to share it, uh, a yes or a no or whatever is required in the question in the chat box. So are you able to see the first question? Shall I start the poll? I can wait for 10 seconds till everyone gets in. Perfect, I see a lot of yeses. So here's the first question coming up. 
for you to vote on. Do you feel technology integration is beneficial in language classrooms? That is, can we improve language education with technology? You may answer with a yes, no, maybe. All yeses. There you go. Are we ready for the next one? That's a quick one. Thank you. Thank you for those enthusiastic responses. The next question coming up on your screen. How comfortable are you using digital tools for teaching? On a scale from one to five, where one is not familiar and five is very familiar. There are mostly so, fives. All right, that's great. Fours and twos. Four, that's wonderful. Let's see. Um, shall we stop the poll or wait for a couple of seconds more? All right, I'll give another five, 10 seconds for everyone to respond. It'll be good that we have more responses so we can see in real time the results of our poll and gather a perspective of what kind of audience we have today which would be very useful for us in this workshop because we hope to learn from each other as much. So I'm stopping the poll now and let's go and see our results. So there's a whopping 100%, 65 votes, 66 and counting, 67 and counting. Uh, so everyone is unanimously voted for yes technology integration is beneficial and we have a range of two to five and a lot of fives here that's wonderful so i'm going to learn as much from you as well um so the fours and fives are pretty tech savvy teachers who are comfortable using digital tools that's a positive sign for us and the twos and threes don't worry that's why we are here and we are learning with you So back to our presentation. That was an interesting poll. So for all the teachers who are on the um, borderline twos and threes, just uh, dipping their toes in the tech world, here's Nick Peachy's SAMR framework for teachers. Uh, who want to integrate technology in the classroom, but are feeling a little overwhelmed, mainly for two reasons. They feel that they don't know as much, or they feel the students know more, um, or uh, it's going to eat into the teaching time. So there are ways of integrating using this framework, where S stands for substitution, which we start just by substituting a paper resource to a computer resource like a, we can just put the text on a Microsoft Word or a Google document and then let the students read from there. This is first step that you can use to integrate uh, technology. And then move on to the next step, which is augmentation, where we use the same document that we give our students to read online um, by highlighting text or using a, a bolding a text or doing something with the text, playing around with it to augment what we're trying to learn, underline the words that mean something. So that's augmentation. And then modification, where we are changing the activity to suit our context. Like if there's a video which is six minutes long, we can condense it to one minute and make it useful for the students and um, make it relevant to their context. Somehow modify the same text that we started off with. And then redefinition, recreation comes the last stage of the SAMR model where you would be uh, creating new content. So, uh, and we unanimously agree on the integration of technology. So here's an activity for you. I want the chat box to go wild. There are six pictures labeled as A, B, C, D, E, and F. And there are phrases on the side. All you have to do is match the phrases to the uh, appropriate picture. For example, if A you think is four, then you can answer A4 in the chat box. So we'll do uh, each picture one by one. Uh, which phrase do you think uh, matches picture A? B, okay. A2, 1B, okay. Let's match the pictures first. So A goes with which phrase? One, two, three, four, or five? All right, a lot of answers coming in. 
someone has said six okay some six is coming in right that's interesting so those who have said six you're on uh dot uh, it is enhanced student engagement. When you see all the heads are towards the teacher, they're listening intently. So it is student engagement. And what does uh, picture B represent? B1s, a lot of B1s coming in. Yes, A6, B1. That's right. So those who said B1, it is personalized learning. You see the student. Um, uh, enjoy uh, because he has achieved something online on his own. So that's personalized learning for you. And C is real world application. That was a giveaway to make it easy sometimes. And what about D? D is also a giveaway. It is skills development. So uh, when we integrate technology, we're giving life skills to our students. And E is also a giveaway. It's global connectivity. And the last one, since only one is left, but still. E is two, that's correct. And F would be? Three, that's right. That's the only option left. But uh, it means data informed instruction. Teachers can use the assessments um, and uh, uh, analyze data that they've received through the online assessments and see where children have done uh, very well or not so well, or what they could connect, or they can take feedback from the students to improve, improvise on the assessments and their own learning curve as well. So, uh, with these many uh, uh, benefits of technology, uh, we need to also understand that technology is a transformative force and it is redefining learning landscape today. So we need to adapt and adopt technology um, to be with the times and help our children thrive in this digital era. Okay. So uh, they were, uh, before I start this journey, let me go back. There are, uh, let me think of uh, some words that you can give me in the chat box. What do you think are key factors, which is the topic today? that we need to keep in mind before we choose any technology resource for our children in the classroom. What words come to your mind? Can you give me some answers in the chat box? All right, some words are already age appropriate, safe and secure, content should be familiar, student friendly, cyber security, engaging, connectivity, very good, uh, easily understandable, adaptive, Engaging, student-friendly, catchy, no ads. I like that. Age-appropriate, relevant, interesting. Wow, those are really important words and you have almost nailed it. Let's put it in perspective and they're still coming. I love those enthusiastic responses. I'm not able to catch up. They're going so fast. Learning in a fun way, time-bound, collaborative, easy to handle, explore. That's right. So let's... Check out some list of words. Now, since you already have so many words that are relevant to the factors that we have to keep in mind when we choose technology, here are some words, but they have a certain connect. Uh, the words are inclusive, connectivity, devices, internet access, adaptability, offline, functionality, universal design, equal opportunity, low bandwidth, and there are some pictures to help you guess what the word that we can put under one common umbrella can be. Simran says, when using technology in class, it's important to keep a few things in mind. Make sure it is reliable, easy to use, enhance. Yeah, you've answered all of it. Have a backup plan. That's right. There were backups today. So um, which word, starting with an A, I'm giving you a hint to make it easier. 
would you put all these words that I've mentioned on, that you see on the screen, that you can put it under one umbrella. Oh, there's there it goes, accessibility, that's right. So accessibility is one of the first key factors that we need to have in mind when we are choosing a resource. Um, the other words, availability, adaptability would come under this umbrella. Um, that's correct. And user-friendly is also coming up, Lumna. Uh, but the words that I have given, they are all sub-factors in a way that contribute to the accessibility of a technology resource. So coming up, some words for the next. Um, yeah, so coming up is the next list for the second key factor that you have to guess. And the words are curriculum uh, alignment, language goals, pedagogical fit, contextualized content, engaging materials, real world application, student interests, cultural sensitivity, learning outcomes, and authentic responses, indispensable and value addition. So again, this is the second key factor that we have to consider before choosing any technology resource. And they all come under one umbrella word. What do you think it could be? There, Kalina has nailed it, relevance, relevance. There, we are getting it already. Adaptability, yes. yes. But in this case, for, for these set of words, it's relevance right there. A lot of relevance coming in. So they have nailed it already. And that's right. I didn't even have to give you clue pictures. So yes, it has to fit as the missing part of the puzzle. So it, it is an, uh, it's not just a fancy tool that we are using to uh, make it engaging in the classroom and just be done with it. It has to miss, uh, it has to be indispensable to why we are using it in that particular classroom. Aligning with the learning goals, it has to be what we are really looking for. It has to have relevance. Yes, tailor-made for the class. That's correct, Satya. And it has to um, give us an additional insight out of the box learning. That's correct. So wonderful words there. Thank you for your enthusiastic responses. And we have nailed two features already. Let's go on to the third. And here's the set of words coming up next. Intuitive interface, a simple navigation, minimal learning curve, clear instructions, technical support, teacher-friendly tools, student-friendly apps, visual appeal, customization options, and seamless integration. Now, the tech-savvy crowd that I'm seeing here today are all enthusiastic teachers. They have already nailed it. I don't have to give any clues. That's wonderful. User-friendly it is. So user-friendliness. And we have already, I think someone had already mentioned this uh, initially. So we have three key facts, easy to handle, yes. Uh, communication, okay. Level appropriate, that's very correct. So level appropriate would go into relevance. And uh, in user-friendly, whoever is using it should not get frustrated or demotivated on using it. So it refers to the design and functionality of a product or technology that makes it accessible and intuitive for users, regardless of their level of, that is wonderfully put, and I missed the name because uh, Shamna, thank you for putting that so wonderfully. Students as well as teachers, exactly. It's not just for the students, it's for the teachers as well. Keep it short and simple. That's right, Chandeep. Teacher prepare level of students, yes. So we have our job cut out for us. Um, so in the process of curating proper tools for our students, we are going to learn a lot. And um, hence, uh, we have to be very careful of what we introduce in the classrooms, hence these three factors. And to help you remember, whenever you're choosing a resource uh, for your classroom, technology resource, um, build up this acronym in your head, ARU, Accessibility, Relevance, and User-Friendliness. And how do you remember it? Are you choosing the right tool for your class in the context, in the learning context, aligning to a lot many things? Now, as we um, move forward, we have understood the three key factors. Let's understand what they mean individually so that we know what to consider and why is it so important to have these three as key factors. Technology must match with student psychology. 
all the time, all the time. Uh, because uh, that is what keeps them motivated and going on. Uh, it has to be a uh, pedagogy fit as well. So accessibility, in your own words, what would you de uh, define accessibility as? All right, a lot of things to know and getting new ideas. Great, glad to hear that. So um, how would you- Easy approach, okay. reaching out to resources are the answers, availability. Yes. All That's learners right. are able to access it in their own way, device and internet connection, approachable, easily available within the reach of students, inclusiveness, discover new things, anytime, anywhere, anything. Right. So uh, Simran has accessibility means, oh, I missed it again. It, it's popped out. So if you uh, can read that out, that sentence, uh, I think she got the message and most of the words that are coming up are also in line with what we want to uh, define accessibility as. So it has to uh, ensure uh, that it is readily available, usable by all the students, regardless of the resource or location. And it has to be usable in diverse educational settings. So if it has that functionality, multifunctionality, it's a good uh, resource. What we need to consider before we choose accessibility as a key factor for a resource would be internet connectivity. Can the technology be accessed offline or even with low bandwidth situations? Uh, what are the solutions that are available? For example, if we have YouTube, that we can download the uh, YouTube videos and use them offline. Or uh, we can have... Uh, Low bandwidth, there are some devices, um, this is outside the scope of this uh, workshop, but I can suggest you Google and find out about Raspberry Pi. So that is a good low cost resource for low bandwidth situations or low resource classrooms. Device availability, um, does it accommodate various devices which are commonly used? So mostly you, uh, students would be having Android phones. So does it work on both uh, platforms, Android and iOS? Inclusivity, of course, is it catering to diverse learning needs? Does it have accessibility features which are special for including students with disabilities? Like, for example, uh, if there is um, uh, closed captioning as we have, or we have uh, alt text for uh, uh, students with disabilities. And it is so important so, so that we can be inclusive and uh, it, um, we cater to every student, regardless of the background or resources, and it creates equal opportunities for learning in various environments. Relevance, how would you define relevance as? Yes, should be large and easy words, okay. So that was for accessibility, Nitasha, I, I understand. Yes, easily appropriate, easily understood, relating, closely connected, related to the topic. I think someone can help me here because the yeah, words are going uh, very fast. Yeah, easily comprehensible, understandable, effective, um, closely connected, appropriate for students, related to the topic, content should be according to the Board, right. conceptually related, helps to achieve learning goals. Yes, so you're bang on. Um, aligning technology with le language learning goals, that's very important. It has to not just have a fancy uh, um, addition to your classroom, it has to align with the language learning goals. Uh, it has to be contextual and suit the needs of not only the students, but also the teachers. Yes, have direct bearing on their learning, related to their daily life, relatable for sure. And what we need to consider is, is it uh, complementing our curriculum? Is it in alignment with the curriculum? Um, how it is connected or important to a specific topic? That's correct, Simran. It indicates how closely connected or applicable information is to a given subject or situation. That's right, Ropita. 
and it is specific to matter or purpose and learning outcomes. Bang on. So we have understood that why we need uh, the relevance of the uh, um, uh, as a key factor in choosing technology. And it is important because uh, it bridges technology with the learning objectives. It promotes student engagement and it helps seamlessly integrate it with the curriculum. So uh, let's understand the last of our key factors, user friendliness. You already know what it is, but I would invite uh, responses. Uh, what is user friendly technology? Friendly, friendly and, simple. and simple, specific on learning subject. Right. Easy to handle, safe and secure, can be easily used by students, easy to access. Accessible. Handle. Yes. Yeah. So simple to understand and navigate. That's correct. So it has to be intuitive. That um, uh, uh, when you um, download a new software, it leads you through it, right? So there are logical steps next, and all that is leading you through it. So it does not need too much of the teacher presence to tell you what to do. So it should be easily understood um, uh, and intuitive for the students what uh, what to do has to be obviously easy to navigate and it should be comfortable for both teachers and students. Easily understandable, yes, it's one of the key factors. Self-learning, that is the crux of the whole uh, choice of the te technology resource because we are trying to make our uh, learners autonomous. So the considerations that we have to keep in mind would be to have a user interface which is clear, not too uh, cluttered and it is visually appealing simple and easy to use. Uh, it um, Does it have a quick learning curve? So uh, like we said, that uh, uh, self-learning, um, it should be good enough that the teacher does not have to do tutorials, that this is how to use the uh, resource. So uh, if it has a steep learning curve, then students and teachers both will get frustrated, demotivated, and they're not going to use it, of course. So in case they encounter a technical issue, then there should be tech support as well. So some troubleshooting support should be there. And why is it important? Because it reduces learning curve and allows it for quicker adoption and integration. Uh, it will not only enhance the teachers and students' confidence, it will give a very positive learning experience also for all the stakeholders. And students love technology, so they get it, exactly. So now that we have uh, uh, seen what the three factors and what they mean and we know how important they are in our choice of uh, uh, an appropriate technology resource. Let's understand better what we need to uh, know or what we need to think ahead before we choose the perfect technology tool for our classrooms. We can't have it all. So a good balance of uh, the three factors, if, if the resource is able to give us that, then it is a good resource. It's going to uh, uh, last us longer than one that is popular, but it, it might be free, but tomorrow it might not be there. So making your choice is very uh, important. We need to prioritize accessibility, relevance, and user friendliness in our choices by the acronym that we just created, ARU, are we choosing right? Are you choosing right? And uh, choosing appropriate technology would mean it should suit your unique context. Now, some are working in uh, high resource settings, so they can they have the liberty to choose a plethora of apps, which you can't suggest to a low resource setting classroom. So it has to be unique to your context. And that's where understanding um, the uh, the uh, insights, having insights about these uh, factors will also help. Uh, what insights we need to have to consider accessibility as a key factor would be, uh, do we have any strategies for ensuring access in low resource settings and how we can uh, ensure that? If the uh, um, resource has offline functionalities, if it has apps that are lightweight, they're not occupying too much MB space in our storage on phones especially, and like I suggested earlier, for limited bandwidth, we can um, try Raspberry Pi. So uh, always we have to balance, there are the three pillars, but we have to balance what uh, uh, suits our context the most by having these insights. For relevance, our guiding factors would be whether the technology choice that we have made is in alignment with specific language goal. 
and teaching under disadvantages needs a lot of creativity. That's correct. So uh, practical steps, we have to identify tools that are in alignment with the curriculum objectives and enhance student learning experience. For uh, user friendliness, what we could do is uh, see, uh, we have to um, have the significance of use and uh, ease of use and uh, for teachers and students and evaluate tools that are based on intuitive uh, interfaces, clear instructions and tech support. Those would be the criteria. So moving forward, now let's uh, quickly uh, uh, show a lesson where we are uh, where we are showcasing what all tools can be integrated easily into a classroom. They might be very basic. I'm sure teachers who are, who are tech savvy must be already using these and many more. So I invite responses in the uh, chat box. If you find a tool uh, uh, better or similar or something different that you have been using, please put that in the chat box so we learn from each other. So uh, uh, this is a lesson from NCRT textbook Honeydew of grade eight. And I'll disclose the topic because that's the next lead into the topic. So we can elicit um, from the students what the topic would be without divulging the topic, just to arouse uh, interest and curiosity. And can you hear this? So were you able to hear the sound? Yes, I already get words there. So we have already uh, uh, zoned in on the topic, it's tsunami. So the visual and the audio clues help you get there, right? So that's arousing the interest without divulging the topic is one good way of getting a lead in. And it was an emergency alarm and one, that's correct. So uh, after getting in the, then you can share the learning outcomes. And uh, like I said, this is uh, from the text, uh, Honeydew. Uh, so we are understanding the concept of uh, tsunami and related vocabulary, some survival st strategies. But what is more important in the learning outcomes I would like to uh, point out is that one of the learning outcomes is to enhance vocabulary, grammar, all the language skills, LSRW, but encourage collaborative learning through technology. So uh, if this is one of the learning outcome, which is in uh, alignment with the curriculum, it makes it important to include as many technology tools that we can integrate into the language lesson. And this is how we could do. For a vocabulary task, we can use, there are many apps, I'm sure, uh, if you can put in some that you're using, a word cloud activity on Mentimeter like this to elicit pre-existent vocabulary related to the topic. Mentimeter, that's right. Any other? Story map, that's right, Olivia. Word cloud, answer garden, some that come off Padlets. Yes. Yeah, the, yeah there, there we have Answer Garden. So there are so many. Jamboard is another. Sadly, Jamboard is going away. Word cloud, that word wall on Padlet. Polls everywhere. So many. Look, we have a load of resources that we can use. Um, what suits our context, we can pick and choose on what we are comfortable with. What might be comfortable for me might not be for you. So you have to uh, choose yourself. There are lovely uh, options. Oh, AI JPT also made it <laughs> great. Vocabulary.com, that's right. So uh, we can then introduce new vocabulary and not too much, just one or two words. For example, we can show a visual or a video. This was a video, but for uh, time constraints, we just put a visual and we can give the word and elicit the meaning, um, form, plural, uh, synonyms. But we can also uh, take them for learning on their own, which we want to encourage by giving them some websites, like uh, this is dictionary.cambridge.org, where they can listen to the- Archipelago. On their own, find out the meaning, related words, and do the homework themselves. So here we are encouraging self-paced learning, right? Back to the presentation. So, and setting up tasks. Yeah, then we can uh, introduce a reading and comprehension task with a video 
which has been again modified this time. Now we are on the modification stage of the SAMR framework, where we have modified the video to suit our context. And again, I don't want to uh, give it away. So I want you to watch carefully because there's a reading and comprehension task coming up. It's a one minute video. Let me know if you are able. Where did all the water go? Back <laughs> quickly. In a matter of minutes, you may be underwater. Even in a tsunami hazard zone, you can still survive. The first step to survival is to be able to identify the early signs of a tsunami. The Pacific Ocean is home to volatile tectonic activity. Earthquake comes before a tsunami. So if you're near the coast and you experience an earthquake, protect yourself from that first. But once the shaking stops, move to higher ground. The beach will grow bigger. Run the other way. An early sign of an impending tsunami is that the water along the coast will recede. It pulls back and exposes the sea floor. Instead, head in the opposite direction. Get to the highest elevation possible. Tsunamis travel quickly. In this case, look for a tall building with a sturdy concrete foundation. If you can't get to higher ground in time, you need to find something to hold on to. Many tsunami victims have been saved by climbing on to detached roofs or holding on tightly to floating cars. This may be anywhere from five minutes apart to an hour apart. So even when you think it's over, stay where you're safe until you hear from local officials. All right. I where did all the water go? So uh, here's a reading and comprehension task. Uh, you can relate the video to the task coming up by asking, was this a video about tsunami or something else? What would you say? Uh, put your answers the down answers in the chat. The answers are already there in the chat. Oh, okay. Okay, <laughs> okay. Safety measures safety. for tsunami. Yes. So uh, safety measures. Yeah, that's right. So we were not talking about the tsunami itself, but about the safety measures for a tsunami, how to escape here, yeah, survival tips. And here's a text that you can introduce from the lesson that I was talking about. And uh, one way is to uh, the normal way of reading it out in the class or asking a child to read. But since we're integrating technology, then we can ask um, our children to go online and use this speech, uh, text to speech software where you can choose your voice uh, a child's voice, a male voice, or a adult female voice. And the uh, use of this software would be that they can use it repeatedly uh, as many times at their own convenience, at their own pace. So it is uh, um, obviously it, uh, helping us making them autonomous and it's saving us a lot of time. Plus they'll be exposed to different accents. So after you have exposed them to the text, this can also be done in a flipped uh, learning class. You can give the text prior for them to listen and the um, uh, whatever the text to uh, speech to text software that you have identified, which suits you. It, there's one on Microsoft Azure as well, or Google uh, uh, speech to text. So once you've identified and they have read the text, it will become easier and save you the time that you think technology takes time in the class and then ask related questions. So for the sake of time, we'll just consider the story from India and you can ask questions like, uh, from the video that you just saw, what did Meghna do right uh, that helped her survive the tsunami? So if you could answer that in the chat box. Okay, PWP reading activity. We will come back to that Saraswati, that's a good tip. All right, she was holding on to wooden door. That's right. So one of the survival tips was to hold on to anything that is floating. And she held on to the tree or the wooden door and that's what helped her survive. So now your the comprehension and reading uh, all have been integrated using uh, an online tool. Um, and then we can integrate speaking tasks by asking a student to share his or her experience about a tsunami or any other similar natural disaster first face to face in the class. And then you can convert it to a, a technological uh, integrated uh, task by asking them to record on voice recorders or uh, WhatsApp recorders or phone cameras, uh, one minute of an anecdote of a similar experience. And then share it in the WhatsApp group or whatever the class group is and then flip grid, that's correct. That's a good one. Uh, peer peer uh, grid is also there, I think, which they can share and then comment on it. So that now we are moving to the modification stage where they are interacting with the content uh, in a different way. So 
it can be set up and then we can have reading and writing tasks by curating a few online articles yes loom and padlet can be used as well thank you for those uh, 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 additional resources always helps to learn more so you can curate online articles but what we have to keep in mind is that we have to have had uh, a, uh, served them ourselves for safety obviously um, for reliability authenticity and uh, uh, whether it is age appropriate level appropriate all of those things and if you think it's a good resource then share it with the kids and a uh, thumb rule would be to go for extensions which are more authentic uh, more reliable like .gov.org um, .com are more uh, authentic resources where we can easily lead uh, send them to so after sharing, then you can set up a writing task based on it, like create a safety brochure, a pamphlet. You can also suggest websites where they can go. Pamphlet can be done on Canva, maybe safety brochure through Story Creator or Book Creator, um, Storybird or Book Creator. And then uh, write a blog and post it online using WordPress.com. You can suggest the tools but let them um, find uh, 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 give one or two tools not too many where they can all uh, use the technology and do the task last but not the least we'll have a reflection task where we are not asking comprehension questions anymore but we are wanting to consolidate what they learned uh, with a simple question like uh, write a one sentence reflection on what you consider is the most crucial aspect that you learned about tsunamis during this lesson from the video or the text, and then convert it into an online assignment, which you can mark and grade and assess. Um, like I have done this, uh, you'll be getting this uh, link in the chat box later, and I'll explain why uh, it's on Google Forms that they can answer. So one of the sites that I visited, I liked to share this because uh, you can also surf one of the sites that you have suggested by in the classroom so they know where to look for information and how. So this is an early warning system of uh, Indian tsunami and the red dots represent where all the earthquake activities are happening. So any coastal area, they, they can be aware in real time. So this will help them create the safety brochure, how to get the real time information. Uh, further technological resources on tsunami can be shared, but like I said earlier, we uh, curate them carefully. Uh, .com, .org, .gov are good, safe uh, uh, extensions to use. So once we have gone through all of the stages of uh, uh, the uh, lesson, we can divide it into four main stages where we shared learning outcomes and a lead-in. We did some vocabulary and reading and comprehension. We did speaking, reading, writing, and a reflection task, and we shared some further resources. How do we consolidate the workflow and uh, showcase the seamless integration of technology across it? So I'll take you quickly through it. We, uh, for the listening task, we had some audio visual aids, and for vocabulary, we had online dictionary and some online web resources. But what uh, uh, stage we were at the SMR framework that we have uh, S as the audio visual aid where we are just using online uh, resource instead of paper resource. And then vocabulary went to augmentation where we told them how to use uh, the website. For reading and comprehension, we had natural AI reader and a YouTube video, which is both substitution and augmentation. For speaking, we had audio recorder and uh, WhatsApp, we used uh, WhatsApp. Um, and this was again integrating. What do you think it was integrating in the SAMR framework? The augmentation and modification. And reading and writing, we were doing e articles uh, and videos. Uh, we gave some government websites and blogging tools and platforms as suggestions where they can do the task on. So that was SAM of the SAMR framework. And finally, reflection, where we get, uh, used a Google form to uh, understand whether they have understood the concept, gave some authentic resources for further self-paced study. And here, the whole framework came together. So uh, you can um, obviously not have everything in the same class, but you can divide it into the four stages that we have and do one technology resource or one skill at a time. That's up to you how you want to use it. 
let's uh, conclude today's session and we'll be open for questions uh, from you. Um, so we discussed the key factors, A, R, U, which is, can anyone give me the three factors in the chat box? What are the three key factors for choosing technology? Or just the acronym? Yes, accessibility, A, R, U, A, R, U. That's great. Augmentation, relevance, yes. And user friendliness. So once we have the three key factors in our head stuck, then we know how to choose appropriately by uh, suiting it to our context and choosing out of these three key factors, which is more important in our context, because we cannot have all the three, of course. That's wonderful. I get a lot of ARUs there. And then we saw how to integrate technology in a language lesson by either skill-wise or stage-wise, uh, choosing the appropriate resource, which is suitable for your needs. Again, I'll stress on that. Uh, it doesn't have to be all of it. It can be just one. Uh, whatever you're comfortable with initially, but move towards SAMR at the uh, as we progress. And last but not the least, we saw the seamless integration and the workflow and the SAMR framework. So thank you for your res uh, enthusiastic responses. That was very encouraging. And I hope that there was some takeaway for each one of you. There's a reflection task that will be shared in the chat box, which you can also answer at the end of the workshop for uh, the constraints of time. But remember, technology can never replace great teachers, but technology in the hands of great teachers is transformational. So you are the I'm, boss in the classroom. Uh, here posted are some- the link, I posted okay. the link for reflection. Thank you. So, so they can do it at the end of the workshop also, because there's one more feedback link that they'll also have to do. They can both do at the end. Uh, I would be looking forward to, to the responses as uh, the reflection link is about one takeaway from today's session and one uh, resource that you think you can start the session from tomorrow in your, uh, that you can integrate in your sessions from tomorrow. That will be very interesting to know. So here are some helpful video links to get you started on your ICT journey and some further reading resources. What we like to give to our students, we do uh, that for you as well. Um, we are now open for questions. And let's continue this journey to empower us further. Uh, there is a question, uh, Shilpi. What if everyone does not have accessibility? That is correct. And that's why I mentioned that uh, uh, depends on your context. Access, if not everyone will have to find solutions to it. Uh, there is this Raspberry Pi, which is a low resource. We'll have to get them somewhere, either through management or through contribution. But we have to get those, we have to put those devices in the hands of our students, right? Only we don't want our students just to be consumers. We want them to be contributors. So if they don't get to um, use technology, we can't give those digital skills, which are so important. So we have to find a way. And that's why uh, accessibility as a feature in most of the technology resources is very key. And another question is, how about implementing technology for smaller classes? It is. It, it's uh, very much the gaming. It's a lot of gaming apps have come for the lower primary classes because that's the way that attracts attention. And the seamless virtual uh, VR for children is uh, ensuring that there's better uh, attention retention for uh, um, uh, students. So for primary students, we have to be very choosy of what resource we are using because obviously we have to sift it through our uh, barometer as well, whether it's safe for them. But certainly uh, primary classes can use a lot of gaming apps and there are already a horde of them in the market. And they are being used in classrooms as well. Yes, all the links would be and the presentation would be shared with you later. Worksheets, okay. Revati says worksheets. Yes, how can we integrate technology to help the students in writing? We just shared one or two of them. Like we can uh, ask them to write blogs using WordPress or we can um, ask them to create pamphlets using Canva. So when in the process of writing, we think that they are not learning, but there's a, there's a steep learning curve uh, we need to remember. They are 
gathering information, they're sifting through uh, uh, more useful information, they're reformulating, editing, and then um, uh, uh, sharing, and then publishing online. So the whole uh, process itself is a steep learning curve, not just in language skills, but also digital skills. Storyboarding, comics, that's right. 